Hi, I'm George Pearson, and in this review video, we'll be taking a look at Batch Photo, which is a very powerful yet very easy to use batch processing program. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button and share, and of course, subscribe if you haven't already done so, and take a look at my Patreon account as well to help support my channel and keep these videos coming. Okay, let's get to it. We're here on the Batch Photo website, right up here. It's batchphoto.com, easy to find, as you can see, just batchphoto.com. And again, very powerful, very easy to use program. Let's not bother with this website right now. Let's switch right over to the program. And there it is. Now, as I mentioned, this is a batch processing program. Very easy to use. It works with a wizard style mentality on working in here has four basic sections up here. You start off from the left and just work your way to the right, or you can use the wizard up here. You also can save profiles as well. Over here we can save projects right there so you can go back and redo a certain set of steps very, very easily. Let me show you how easy it is to actually use this thing. All you need to do is just do drag and drop photos here, or you can click on add photos here. We're in the add photos section. So click on Add Photos, and I'll just grab a bunch of stuff in here. This is where I store all my public domain photos, and here's some stuff from way back when. Let me just grab a bunch of these things. These are all from projects I did, oh, three, four years ago. And I'll just grab a few of these. There we go, just kind of at random in here. And that's fine. And click Open. And it opens those all up. There we go. These are mostly JPEGs, as you can see in there. You can remove images just by clicking on the image. You can see it down here. You can zoom in out if you want to. And you can then remove there. You can view the image here, little view window. Detail, small icon, medium icon, large icon. Or you can remove a picture out of your list. Just click on remove to take it out of your list. So this first section is all just about filling the photos area here. You can come back and you can add more again right here. So you can you know work in different folders, whatever you want to get as many as you need to work in. The next segment here, the next section is simply the edit photos. And in here, you're going to go through and decide what you want to do. I have a couple of examples over here. And what you do, the way you work on this is that you simply attach filters and the program then runs through the filters and does all this for you on your whole batch of images. Let me just remove all of these. I'll remove all. And we'll start from scratch. Now, your photos will be listed over here. And again, you can do a whole bunch of steps in here. Down below here, there are some presets you can work with. Rename to folder's name, rename to photo date, custom defined name. You can adjust that right here. We're previewing this image at this point. There's our preview. Here's the original. So you can see how this works right here as we're setting up our filters. So let's go ahead and do couple of these, click on Add Filter, and this brings up the Filters section. Now there are a bunch of these in here. The top one is showing you everything. I prefer to use this by going through the different sections. We have Annotate, Transform, Touch Up, Apply Fix, and Decorate. On Annotate, we have Comment and Date, that's standard stuff. There's also Watermark Text, Watermark Logo, and a Watermark Mark. So all of these are far more advanced from other utilities such as what comes with Photoshop Elements or Adobe's Photoshop program. With the logo, you simply click on this and then select the logo you want to use to add into your images or a watermark text. Let's go ahead and click Transform. We have Auto Rotate, Auto Crop, Color Replace, Crop, Flip, Resize, which says Advanced, Roll, Rotate, and Thumbnail. So a lot of options in here. A lot of stuff here on Touch Up. Auto Contrast, Auto Gamma, Auto Levels, Brightness, Contrast, Color Balance, Equalize, Hue Saturation, Levels, Reduce Noise, Sharpening, and Advanced Sharpening. And here, let's go ahead and just hit the Auto Contrast. And we'll add that one and choose OK. There's a preview, and here's the original. Let's see what else we have in here. Let's come down to Apply Fix. 
black and white, blur, charcoal, edge, emboss, Gaussian blur. Again, a lot of things you can do in here. We'll just convert all these things to black and white. That'll be easy to see. Choose OK. There's our black and white. There's the original, and there's the black and white. Choose OK. And it adds that to our list over here. So it'll do an auto contrast and then do a black and white adjustment. Let's go back to Add Filter again. And the last section down here is Decorate. And it has several frames, a grunge frame, a picture frame, a raised effect, a shadow effect, a shape frame, simple border, vintage frame. So you can come in here and actually put frames on all of these things as well. Let's go ahead and just do a grunge frame on this just for the heck of it. Let it figure this out. And there's that grunge frame showing in here. Several options on that. I'll leave it at the top one. And our background, let's just change this background here. So you can change any color you want. I'll just choose the black background and OK. Let it refigure. And there's that black grunge background. So real easy, as you can see in here, to come in and apply any of these additional filters. I'll just choose this one as OK. Give it a second to figure it out. And there's that grunge on that black and white image. OK, so once you have this set, once you have decided what steps you want to perform on your batch processing, just move over next here to the Setup section. In here, you can choose your destination. You have folder on your computer, send by email, upload, FTP. Go to a website, for instance. A lot of options in here. You can put it back as the in the original or output destination. You can recreate original folder structure in a selected folder. Use original photos folder as output destination. The one I like down here is to create a subfolder in the original photos folder. And then just give it a name right here. You can come in and actually choose a name if you want to. Process 2 is just fine. And then down here we have format. Here's where you can change the format. Lots of formats, as you can see. I'm just scrolling through and see how many different formats there are in here to select from. Now mine are all in the JPEG format, which is just fine. So I'll leave that alone. Keep it in the original format if possible. And you can also fine tune your settings over here. And again, you can be very specific on these settings. Down below here, open the output folder when you're finished processing. Set the output photos date and attributes to same as the original. You can also delete your source photo if you want to. I never recommend doing a deletion. Always keep your originals just in case you have to go back for something. So in the setup, what you're really doing is choosing your output and your format on that. Once that's done, just go over here to process. I have 16 photos. Hit yes. And it goes through and processes all 16 of these photos with all those steps that we set up. There's quite a few steps. As you saw, we had three steps and the grunge was doing quite a bit. It's finished. There's the folder. And there are the images all brought up for us. It's just kind of finishing those off. And there we go. You saw how fast that was and how easy that was. So as you can see, great, great tool, great program. It's still working on a few things. Actually, it's done. She's OK. There we go. Let's close that one down. So that's all there is to it. Simple one, two, three, four process in here. Add your photos. Edit your photos, which is choosing your filters. Setup is your output destination. And hit process, and you're all done. It's that easy to do. So there it is. As I said at the beginning here, very powerful, yet very easy to use batch processing program. And again, this at this point is my favorite program for doing batch processing. And I highly recommend this for anybody who needs to do a lot of batch processing. If you just have a few things, there are other ways of getting around this. But if you're doing a lot of batch processing, this is a great tool to pick up. Let's now switch back over to the website and take a look at that. Here we are back on the home page, the index page here for this product. They have a free trial. Well worth trying it out. Again, it's so easy to use. It'll take you just a second to figure it out and actually use this. Down below, they have a few videos in here. But again, you don't really need to bother with these things. It's, it's so easy to use this program. It doesn't really need any training per se. Lots of features. We've already taken a look at a lot of this stuff. Kind of mentioned all that. 
different design looks in here. One thing you can do, I didn't mention that you can resize the window. You can maximize it to fit your whole screen if you want to, or you can resize it. It's not a lock size, so it's very easy to use that way. Let's just finish up by taking a look at the cost, and I think for what it does, it's very reasonable. Let me pick it up here. There we go. There's a basic batch photo home, which is only 30 bucks at this point. There's a batch photo pro which has more options and it's 50 and I was just demonstrating in the batch photo enterprise version which is still only 130 and if you do a lot of this kind of work this is really well worth it again even though it's a little bit pricey at this point if you're doing a lot of batch processing this is the easiest and the best program I've come across to date on doing batch processing and at this point is my preferred program to use for batch processing. So there you go, the 30, 60 day actually right there, 60 day money back guarantee. It's both Windows and Mac applicable. Lifetime license, you pay this once and you're done. So again, a great tool. I highly recommend this one and you'll find it up here under batchphoto.com. I'll go ahead and put a link for this in the description as well. And as always, let me remind you to hit that like button and share with your friends. Just click on share. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit that bell icon on subscribe so you get notifications of new videos going up. I usually do two to three new videos every single week unless I'm off on vacation or something. And I hope you've enjoyed this review and I look forward to seeing you again on How To Gurus. Mm -hmm.